Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome to First Center and our You Can Heal Your Life self-healing class. We've called this class the Hay and Holmes class, uh, self-love class. It's, it's the same class that meets every Thursday. We have been doing this class for many years, or I have been. Uh, it started with me when the book You Can Heal Your Life came out, and I became a part of a group uh, the year after the book was written, and I've been leading workshops with this material ever since. Uh, First Center for Spiritual Living uh, was called First Church of Religious Science in the old days, and this is the place where Louise Hay actually sat in classes like we have here and uh, studied the Science of Mind textbook and learned about self-healing, mm -hmm. and most of her treatment uh, work and things that she mentions in her book had its origins right here. Uh, with us uh, and what she studied here and what you can engage in here too uh, in our various classes. But tonight, it's a night for us to uh, get a little spiritual lesson uh, and hopefully give you something powerful to think about. Uh, the lesson title uh, is, it's really about the work we do. And nobody likes the word work. <laughs> uh, but in, in fact, it does require a little bit of effort if you want to see change. So before I begin, uh, if you're uh, here for the first time or you're watching this in an after broadcast, it's always great if you send an email or a message to the center uh, and connect with us on Zoom. Because after our gatherings, both on Sunday and this evening, we go around and everybody has a chance, if you want to share, to say hi, where you're from, and uh, comment um, or reach out in any way you want. Uh, it's not to pressure you, it's just to give you an opportunity to connect and be a part of our community. Uh, also, uh, you can become a, a virtual member of our community. It's just a nominal amount of money. I believe it's $50 is our special. So uh, just send us a message and we will uh, send you spiritual gems via our e-letter and invites uh, and so for all of you who are on the Zoom call now, uh, let us begin. Uh, so again, the lesson comes essentially from the book, You Can Heal Your Life. Uh, and most of the work from Louise Hay, once again, came from Ernest Holmes' uh, uh, book, textbook. Uh, every week we have a timely topic. And uh, so let's talk about the work. The work was a subject that I, uh, had presented to me in various groups I was involved in in Florida. It's spiritual work. <laughs> and we come back to this title a couple times a year. And as I've said in previous classes, people don't like the idea of having to do work or working hard. Uh, maybe one of you out there will have a better name for the lesson. You, if so, you can set it into Jimmy. And the next time around, we'll, we'll use your title. Um, uh, my friend Celeste would have said, uh, work is a four-letter word. So it, it's, it's a subject that uh, for some are, you know, I enjoy this work, but you, you, can, uh, you can tell me what you think afterwards. Uh, I want to acknowledge the people tonight also who show up, you know, mostly every Thursday and, and or Sunday. Because those of you who are doing the showing up are probably the people who are doing the work. Uh, because you keep coming back to be reminded, you know, and uh, we all need reminding. I need reminding. So uh, uh, good for you for doing the work. Uh, I celebrate each and every one of you who are uh, attempting to change your life for the better. Uh, it's obvious to me as I listen to the remarks, and I do read them. Sometimes it's a few days later that are in the various chats and all of our different platforms. In the comments, there's real change that's happening for many of you. And I think that comes from just staying um, in the conversation, uh, you know, being mindful of what your dialogue's all about. It isn't like you fix it in one hour. Raymond Charles Barker will say, you're all fine when you leave here, but what happens when you leave here? You know, it, it involves a certain practice or a certain amount of effort. 
Regarding being here in this class, uh, some of you will disappear after tonight. We won't see you for a week or two. <laughs> and then maybe longer, and then you come back. Um, and the point I wanted to bring up tonight, or one of the many uh, things I wanted to remind you of, is that each and every one of us are evolving and we're growing. We're spiritual beings, each of us, and we are evolving, you know? You know much more today than you did five years ago or 40 years ago. Uh, and that's perfect and that's to be expected because spirit is moving forward by means of every one of us. Each of us are a part of this creative process. So we're all evolving and we're all growing. You know, we have all kinds of these corny sayings, you know, there's not a spot where God is not. So that would suggest and inform you that Okay, spirit, this essence, this source, this energy, you can call it whatever you want to call it, is in everything, everywhere, and all at once. And it operates on different levels according to your self acceptance according to the, your level of knowing. So as you get involved in a deeper understanding of metaphysics, you'll come to understand that you're really one with this creative substance. And as you connect with it more deeply, You'll see how your world will turn, it will change, and how it will evolve as you learn to work with it. So we're being open and receptive tonight to working with spirit. And anything and everything is possible for you. Uh, the spirit, or, uh, this creative intelligence is always saying yes to you. We can think of it that way. Uh, you're, you'll remember the movie The Secret that we talk about occasionally, where the big genie in the movie said, your wish is my command. Well, it's really like that. As you believe and as you understand and as you know, life reflects all of that in your life. Um, when we have people coming into this class, and some of you will be listening maybe a month from now on YouTube or somewhere else, uh, I know that you want to evolve and you're willing you're developing a willingness to challenge yourself to see things in a new way. And I'm here to say you can do it. You can definitely, no matter what your circumstances are, they can be bettered by being involved with this teaching and beginning, and, and by beginning to practice, you know, what we're teaching here. So there needs to be a degree of vigilance, or if that word's... Uh, Vigilance would mean I, I would need to be watchful and I need to pay attention to what it is that I'm thinking and what it is that I'm saying, you know, throughout the day and the week. Because we have a whole discussion that goes on within us. And you're the only one who can assess, you know, uh, whether you know, you're the only one can do an inventory and just say, hey, look, I'm really being down. I, my perspective is really off, I'm negative. And if that's so, you know, you're, we're not here to beat you, beat you up and certainly we don't want you to beat you up. But it's really important to pay attention to what it is and how it is, how you're showing up in terms of, not what you look like to the world so much because any of us can dress up and look fine and put on a mask, but what is it that lives within you, right? Is it fun? Is it joyous? Is it filled with positive expectancy? Uh, that's the goal. Because when you have a sense of joy and fun and positive expectancy, when that lives within you, that is what outpictures in your world. Uh, so as you work, do this work, you're gonna see great changes sooner than later. Uh, there used to be a prosperity teacher, an abundant living teacher in New York City. Some of you know him as Reverend Ike. Uh, I looked up his name uh, recently, and it's, it was actually Frederick J. Iker and Cotter II, better known as Reverend Ike. He passed away in the year 2009. And he was a very, um, I don't know, colorful person. You know, he's like full of uh, energy, and he was the, the abundance guy. Uh, and he had a corny phrase, and we, we basically took it from him, uh, which is regarding our teaching. You know, you just can't lose with the stuff we use. And it's corny, but it's true. You cannot lose with the stuff we use. 
The process of learning is always the same, no matter what the subject. Whether you're learning a new program on your iPhone or your, uh, what are the other phones? Your Android. Whether you're learning a new program or a new app on your phone or you're learning to drive a car, uh, or learning to play tennis, or, or even if you're learning to try to think more positively, okay? It's, it's difficult at first. If I'm a negative thinker, I'm, I'm a negative thinker. You know, there are some people who really live their life from the vantage point of, uh, Bill Tolliver used to say, ain't it awful? Some people, you know, going around looking, thinking the sky is going to fall, like Chicken Little. You know, if you keep on doing that, you know, you're going to have a life that's going to reflect all of that. So to turn all that around, that type of thinking, <laughs> um, and we all have some of it. You know, it requires paying attention. Uh, all the 12-step programs have inventories. Inventories are nothing more than you sitting with you and taking a look at what it is that's going on within you. And it, a good inventory will acknowledge the good because there's much good about what's going on within all of us. But then again, there is that other stuff. And that other stuff can really hold us back. And, and somehow we cling on to it. I believe there's safety in being maybe a victim or complaining and... Uh, I don't know about anybody else, but I know Louise Hay would say, all is well. And she would say, I release the need. I release the need. Well, what, what the hell? Why would I have a need for feeling awful? Why would I have a, a need to be complaining all the time? Why would I have a need for any of that? Say, well, those are some big questions. It's, it's kind of like, who would I be if I, if I dropped all that stuff? Who would I be if I no longer complained? Who would I be if I could keep seeing it's good? That's the old Edwina Gaines. She's one of another teacher. She's always focused on seeing the God or the good. You can't get her off track because that is her practice, seeing the God and the good in every situation. Well, if you were in the teaching for a while, you could take more classes and become a practitioner. And that's eventually what the practitioner learns is he or she is going to see train themselves to see uh, what's possible and what's good in every situation and know that life is evolving perfectly and always and that there's not a spot where this presence is not, not a spot where God is not. So that's how it works. Um, I can paint another picture, another example. This one you've heard more often. I think Shirley, one of our members, talks about this a lot. If you could imagine there's a big mirror and that big mirror is reflecting back to you all of your thoughts, all of your beliefs, all your fears too. It reflects back all that you imagine. <laughs> if you can imagine you have this big mirror that's reflecting everything back into your life, then you're gonna understand better how this process works. Now imagine if you've been around on the planet for 25 years or 45 years, or some of you even 75 years, Imagine you've got this mirror reflecting back all of that information that you have stored within you. All your conclusions, all your hopes, all your beliefs, all your dreams, your losses, your faith, any perceived failure, it's all being reflected in your life. See, all of this stuff, sometimes we call it our blind spots, our belief system, in the four agreements, they talk about the agreements that we have had since the time we're kids. All of this lives within us. Um, some of us, you'll note, um, in your own life, your friends, your family members in our, in our center, some you will note are far more positive than others. And some of us have a lot more work to do on ourselves, and we know it. Nobody needs to tell us what's wrong with us, right? There isn't really anything wrong with us, by the way. But we have things that we hold on to, that we cling to, that are not bringing us happiness, joy, or peace. So these are the things in an inventory you'd want to identify. So you could do what? In affirmative prayer, Ernest Holmes would say, the time, the art, the method of ridding yourself <laughs> you know, of this negativity or this negation so you could perceive the presence, perceive, understand, and feel the presence. Because it's in you and around you, but you can't touch it when you're all clouded up with that stuff. 
So when you learn to do this form of prayer, this affirmative prayer, uh, when anything un unlike joy and peace comes up, you have the opportunity to um, neutralize whatever that thought or feeling is to bring yourself to a place where you can understand that you are one with all that is and you are supplied and supported truly. Consciousness is expanding in all of the world and most importantly, it's expanding in you. As I said earlier, you're not in the same place as you were five months ago or five years ago. Life is always going forward. You always are understanding more. You're never in a place where you're understanding less. So that's one of the great things about life. Life is moving forward. The whole planet and everyone on it is evolving. You don't need to worry about what's going on with everybody else. We, we do our work in mind, we do our work in consciousness. <laughs> the universe has everyone's back in that sense because everyone's in a different place learning what they need to learn at the perfect and right time and so are you and so am I. We, you and I, anyone who's listening to this call t this evening or in the coming week, or pick it up maybe two or three weeks from now, each of us are very fortunate because we know that we live move and we have our being in this energy and we know that this energy is responding to us here's the thing not everybody knows what you know a lot of people don't know that they have this power that's within them and responding to them many people are not awake even slightly many people live in fear constant fear and a lot of doubt and tremendous insecurity when you come into a teaching like this, all of that stuff begins to slip away as you do the work, as you develop the faith. Fear, you know, anger, resentment, all that stuff begins to slip away. Sadly though, for most of the people in the world that you'll encounter, their deep-seated beliefs and their programming is more negative than positive. And remember that big mirror I had you imagine, right? So what do you imagine is reflected in life with most people? A lot of pain and suffering and fear and uh, And when you come into a teaching like this, there's a tremendous amount of relief that you immediately can begin to experience through the practice of this teaching. That's why it pays huge dividends to stay plugged in on the calls. Now this may not be enough just Tuesday and Thursday. But it's a great beginning because we'll always be reminding you of how wonderful you are, how wonderful life is, and just keep on reminding you of the greatness that you are. Because if you've got a lot of this negative spiral downward thinking going on, uh, if you keep tuning in, we can keep on reminding you of the opposite of that. But the work that is done is always done in consciousness. We say it's done in mind. And you're the person that does it. Um, any of the practitioners or the ministers, we would do it for you if we could, but it simply doesn't work that way. Um, you have everything you need. You can call us when you, you're stuck, because we'll remind you. Uh, and we can teach you how to do affirmative prayer. Affirmative prayer is not a complicated thing to learn how to do, and we'd be happy to help you, teach you. Uh, so again, uh, all of you who are able to take this in, myself included, are very, very fortunate people in the world. You can't lose with this, this stuff that we're using. Uh, I know people are worried about other people. Um, and the thing I, I wanted to say in this lesson is all of the people that you're concerned about, um, each of them are in the right place at the right time and their their spirit is with them too as i get messages in my day-to-day -day living as you do everyone else is too so let's celebrate the fact that you're here and you have this knowledge and uh and it, it's a privilege to have this understanding so you can continue to do this work let's also celebrate the fact that you want to consciously evolve and grow uh, most people, as I said before, are caught up in the consciousness of separation and duality. Those are two words that I, 
you know, we hear talked about a lot in metaphysics. If a person's caught up in separation, they're always talking about them, what other people are doing, and you know, them and us, and they'll think in terms of bad people and good people, and bad energy and good energy. And we understand here that there is one power, there is one life, there is one energy, and that energy and life is ours. Uh, we're created in freedom, so we can use it any way we want to. As we come into a class like this, we're going to keep reminding you uh, that you have power and you can use it, and you can use it for the good. Uh, so we come here, Raymond Charles Barker would say, we show up as positive people. We're full of potential. Most of us have learned um, how to be acceptable to society. In other words, I alluded to earlier, you can show up and dress up and all of that. We have learned how to be pleasing. But that's not what we're talking about here. That's not the work that I'm suggesting in this lesson. Uh, you might at first glance think that's good, but when you really look at it, you know, you're longing for more. Uh, a lot of people over time have, have adapted and molded themselves to be what their husbands or parents or society wants us to be. Uh, we've learned over time to present ourselves in a way where People might think we're nice. <laughs> We've become socialized. <clears throat> We've adopted certain codes of conduct, attitudes, and behaviors that have been, uh, you know, we've cultivated over the years. Uh, but in this class, it's a little bit different. In this class and in this teaching, what we're about here is doing the inner work. We do our work again in mind. I quote Louise Hay often from the book, You Can Heal Your Life. Uh, she talks about the all importance of this inner dialogue, which you'll hear me bring up every Thursday when I ask, what's it been like being you? Uh, many of us have learned how to tame this inner dialogue, to modify, uh, modify ourselves in such a way that we can be gracious. But underneath, there's the part of us that still is in a disconnect, where we're angry and we're reactive and all of that. Um, if you go to the book, The Four Agreements, um, the author laid it out just like Louise Hay. Uh, and in The Four Agreements, it's just really all the things that we've accumulated over uh, our lifetime. And uh, uh, it's the story. So we want to learn how to let go of the story. Uh, the multitude of, and the masses uh, feel inadequate and many are caught up in trying to improve their circumstances in their outer world. Uh, they're always trying to prove something to someone that they're good enough uh, and that type of thing. And where does all that come from? Well, that comes from your belief system. So uh, I think today uh, the question I want to throw out is uh, come right back to the, the beginning. You know, how are you committed to doing the work in your own life? What are you doing to stay connected? Um, what are you doing when tough things happen? Uh, you know, what are you doing to heal your life? This is the subject of tonight's class, healing your life. What's your commitment? Um, are you like a Dwayne Gaines? Are you committed to seeing the good and the God uh, in every situation? Because that's ultimately what we're working with here. We're working with consciousness always. So um, the second half of this lesson we'll save for another day. Uh, so let's go to the break.